Florida State kicks off. They won the toss and deferred. Ryan Fitzgerald's kickoff's a touchback. Here's Molly McGrath. Sean Dabo Sweeney made a last-minute change to his roster after trouble in the kicking game last week. Walk-on place kicker Jonathan Weitz had left the program and leased an apartment in New York where he was getting ready to start as a financial analyst just over a week from today until he got a call from Coach Sweeney this past Sunday asking him if he was interested in kicking again. Weitz is eligible because he's taking online courses, but he hadn't kicked a football since April. He has never kicked a field goal in college and today is the first day that he's available for live contact. And in pregame warm-ups, he made 17 of his first 20 field goal attempts, and his longest was from 45, Sean. It's an incredible story, which we will continue to add on to as we go. Great job, Molly. Here's Will Shipley on first down for Clemson. He is their leading rusher and has had great outstanding success against Florida State in the last two meetings 100 yards rushing plus in both games and he's a terrific player obviously excellent between the tackles but has breakaway speed on the perimeter and can be a valuable resource for Cade Klubnick as a receiver in the passing game gain of nearly five on the first play from scrimmage Klubnick into a crowd and it's batted down by Kalen Deloach. Outstanding linebacker. It'll be third down and five. Klubnick without a couple of key weapons today. Antonio Williams, their leading receiver, is not going to play with a lower body injury suffered in their win against Florida Atlantic last week. And Cole Turner, another important receiver, is gone for the year after adductor surgery. So they're a little diminished. At the wide receiver position. Good time for Klubnik on target. First down. Bo Collins. A six yard gain to the big target. 6 3 2 10 out of Los Angeles. A nice accurate throw from Kate Klubnik working against Fentrell Cypress, the excellent transfer corner from Virginia. Bo Collins on the slant. Perfect throw. Nice conversion. Cypress, one of many transfers who have been a big part of this. Return to prominence for Florida State. Shipley taken down by Tatum Bethune, a hard-hitting run stopper at linebacker. And you would think Florida State's game plan defensively is completely sell out against the run. Do not let Phil Moffa and Will Shipley get going. Put the pressure on the quarterback, keep them behind the sticks, and allow their terrific defensive ends to pin their ears back in obvious passing downs. Shipley and Moffa are in there together on second and nine. Good run after the catch. Some poor tackling by the Knowles, and it's a gain of six. And they'll go quickly to the line. In this new look offense, Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator, brought over from TCU. And he calls it the dirt raid. He's out of the air raid system, popularized by Mike Leach and others. But Unlike a lot of air raid programs, they lean much more heavily on the run. Hence the dirt raid. On third and three, Shipley did not get there. About a yard and a half short, and Dabo Sweeney has an early decision on fourth down in his own territory. Braden Fisk made the stop. He's been remarkable, in the words of his coach, Mike Norvell. Dabo ready to send the punt team out. And already a smattering of boos with that decision. If you're Florida State, be alert for the fake right here. Nearing the 50-yard line, I'd like to go punt safe and make sure my antenna was up for any snap that was offline. Aiden Swanson is the punter. Keon Coleman, another one of those transfers, has made a huge impact. Now they move into position. Like it might be a fake, or perhaps just trying to draw Florida State offside. And they took too long to do it. Fourth down. Dabo Sweeney today looking for ACC regular season win number 100. The only coach in conference history to reach and surpass that mark, the Florida State. Legend Bobby Bowden, who won 117 regular season ACC games. Swanson, good punt. And Coleman has it go over his head and into the end zone. A 
a 60-yard punt. Jordan Travis and the Knowles on offense for the first time when we come back to Clemson. Back in Clemson, South Carolina, Florida State ready to go on offense for the first time, led by Jordan Travis. The 23-year-old from West Palm Beach making his 31st career start. 3-0 this season, including an opening win against LSU, in which he was terrific. Dual threat quarterback gets it out into the flat immediately. Lawrence Toafili out to the 28-yard line. Travis started his career at Louisville, played in just three games in 2018, transferred back to his dream school, Florida State. It wasn't easy early on. Started out 2-4 and four in his first six starts. Had trouble throwing the ball, thought about becoming a wide receiver. Mike Norvell arrived, had great faith in him as a quarterback, and he has developed. 18 and 6. He's won his last nine games as a starter, as have the Knowles. And there's a powerful run by Trey Benson. Six yards and a first down. That nine game winning streak back to last year is the fourth longest active streak in the country. And Jordan Travis is a testament of perseverance. So much of playing the quarterback spot is confidence. He didn't have it until Mike Norvell arrived. And the sky's the limit for this young man with his ability to run and throw the ball down the field. Impressive young man, a team leader. Dabo Sweeney raved about his appreciation for Travis as both a person and a player. Still five on the play clock, as always, as the visitors, you battle the deafening noise here at Memorial Stadium. Benson for one. Alex Atkins, Greg, the offensive coordinator, told us during the week, part of that development of Travis, he has free will at the line of scrimmage, to use Atkins' expression. He can change the play, basically do whatever he wants. Did so right there, adjusted it at the line of scrimmage, complete freedom to change anything he sees defensively. Second down and nine. Travis fires, caught. Short of a first down is the tight end, Kyle Morlock. Got close, but about a half yard shy. A gain of eight to the transfer from Shorter University, a D2 school down the road in Rome, Georgia. Alex Atkins doubles as the offensive line coach, and he is a veteran group that welcomes back Maurice Smith at center today. Benson got just enough for the first down. Bounced off the hit from Jeremiah Trotter. Justin Maskell also in there for Clemson. And Mike Norvell does such a great job to start games and halves, making adjustments in the second half and scripting his plays in the first half. They have scored a touchdown or field goal on the first possession of the last nine halves, including the six drive openers of each half this year. And that's a sign of good coaching. Scoring on the first drive of every half this year. Travis back throw and it should have been picked off. He threw it behind Jaheim Bell and it clanged off Jalen Phillips. Just not on the same page with Jaheim Bell. Watches Jaheim Bell's releasing. He sees outside. I think Jordan Travis thinks that ball's going to go right here. Instead, Jaheim Bell rolls to the outside. And it's almost intercepted. Out of the same page there with his tight end. Second down and 10 from their own 45. Rodney Hill, who brings some big playmaking ability, the running back position. He's explosive to use Coach Atkins' description of him. They basically rotate in three. Benson, Toa Feely, and Hill, the running back. Third down and eight. Travis. Throws on his back foot, and he completes it, and then it comes out. Keon Coleman couldn't hang on. He had... 
have the first down with about a yard to spare if he'd been able to make the catch. Andrew Makuba nearby. And a great job of Makuba coming off an injury missed last week. He closes. Great job initially separating by Keon Coleman, but not strong enough even at six foot four, 220 pounds to reel in that pass with close coverage nearby. Makuba back after missing the last two weeks. Played in the opener against Duke, part of an experienced secondary. That they think is much improved after a big time struggle last year. Alex Mastromano, the putter, and the fair catch made by Tyler Brown looking up into the bright sun. He struggled just a bit. They won 23 to 6 over Wake Forest on that afternoon in 1967. Our friend and legendary colleague Brent Musburger called it the most exciting. 25 seconds in college football. Pass batted down. It was intended for Adam Randall, and he was open in the flat, but Fabian Lovett got a hand on it. The fifth year senior from Vicksburg, Mississippi, who started his career at Mississippi State. Oh, man, what a play there by Fabian Lovett, because if that ball lands in Adam Randall's chest, he's got at least 10, 15 yards from the nearest defender. On second and 10. After a 44-yard punt by Mastromano pinned them in, Will Shipley driven back. Love it involved in that stop as well. Just a two-yard pickup for Clemson. Third and long situation here. Garrett Riley's got to understand that the pass rushers for Florida State are a handful for everybody in college football, but the tackles are the most gettable spot of this offensive line. You've got to think you might move the pocket for Cade Klubnick, get him outside, give him a little time to survey the field downfield. So Adam Fuller, defensive coordinator. Klubnick throws, far sideline, caught first down. Bo Collins with Fenchel Cypress in coverage, and without Williams and Turner today, you'd have to think they'll go to Collins a lot. And this is a big time throw from Kate Klubnick a little bit inside fortunate though for Bo Collins and that strong right hand to be able to reel in usually you miss an outbreaker inside that might be picked to the house but his receiver is able to reel it in for the conversion late sub running on for Florida State they weren't set up front and Shipley goes right through the middle for a quality gain on first down now he has to come off Looked like maybe something involving his left arm now there is a flag down on the play. Jeff Heiser is our referee. We have Jeff on our telecast for the third time in four weeks. Need to start traveling with the crew. Yeah, right? does a fine job. We're happy to have him. <laughs> Personal foul, defense number 55. Harris Hamilton off on the final play. Came back in participating. 15 yard penalty. I think Fisk was the guy running back onto the field. Our crack spotter Zach Rapadrazone tells us his helmet came off on the previous play, so he has to stay out for play, and here he comes running back in. Man, did he blow up the right guard, Mitchell Mays, too. Didn't even see him coming. It's an ear hole shot, but a big mistake there by the substitution of Florida State defense. First and ten, swing pass, errant. Intended for Maffa off his hands. That's a layup that should easily be completed, but Klubnik off target. 19-year-old sophomore from Westlake High School, Austin, Texas, a perennial power where Drew Brees and Nick Foles played, among others. Very highly recruited. Backed up DJ Uyunglele for most of last year, and when Uyunglele struggled early, in the ACC title game, he came in, Klubnik, and was the game MVP in their win over North Carolina. Another one that required a hands catch by the speedster, Tyler Brown. He's out of bounds in Knowles territory at the 49, a yard short of the first down. So far, Garrett Riley's done a nice job, and they get a little off schedule with a bad first down play, make it third and manageable. Third and one. A lot of thinking in the pass. Batted down. Jared Verse. It is ruled a forward pass. 
A tremendous defensive end. Who's the number one defensive player on Mel Kuyper's draft board. Made a big play there. What a great play, too. And Cade Klubnik, as he gets a little older, you'll negotiate that rush, try to throw it around him, but first, too big and knocking it down. Fourth and a yard. Dabble Sweeney going for it at the Florida State 49. Nearly nine minutes in. Movement, but they got back. It was Shaheem Brown. Play clock down to three. Do they intend to snap it? No. Dabo Sweeney indicating that he was trying to call a timeout. I think they're going to give him the timeout instead of the delay of game penalty. We'll see if they do indeed go for it on fourth and one when we come back. All season long, student sections across the country competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Great student section here enjoying a glorious 79 degree day. Their team about to go for it on fourth and one at the Florida State 49. Maffa is the big running back. Maffa, first down, running off left guard. And a great job by the left side of this offensive line. As you can see, Marcus Tate, the left guard, 74, and a double team with Will Putnam, their center, their best offensive lineman, moving that defensive player back a little bit and enough for Maffa to secure the first down. Playing without their starting right guard, Walker Parks. Mitchell Mays is in at right guard. Club Nick wide open. Jake Brenning stole the tight end to the Florida State 30, 15 yards on the completion of Brenning Stoll. And there's a flag down on that play. Pass interference, offense, number eight, 15-yard penalty. Adam Randall. Trying to create a mesh technique across the middle, but you're going to see on the left side, Adam Randall. Watch as he comes from your left, and look at how he really blocks the defender to try to create that pick. It's a very easy call by the official. It just took him a second to clean it up. As you can see, though, Bo Collins is screaming out the back door with a lot of room. It's difficult to diagnose, but that's a good call by the official. So a big call instead of going to the Florida State 30, they're at their own 40 and first and 25. Klubnik on the design roll, put it up for grabs and is fortunate to get away with that one in a double coverage. Intended for Bo Collins and broken up by Cypress, who's had an active first quarter. Let's quickly bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what did you think of that penalty call? Well, it's the responsibility of the offensive player to avoid contact. Now, the way he comes into him, the defender kind of grabs him. If he would have tried to get away from that little grab, I think he might have been okay. But he, as Greg said, he continued to drive across the field. So I think it's a good call. On second and 25, under duress, out for Shipley with a lot of running room. Will Shipley breaks tackles, and he's out of bounds at the 42 of four yards short of the first down. It was Joshua Farmer who put pressure on the quarterback. And a great job, too, by right tackle number 78, Blake Miller, securing that edge and allowing Shipley to get one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Knowles, the safety, who's filling in for the injured Akeem Dent. Shipley, of course, so difficult in the open field. And yet another example of Garrett Riley, second and really long off schedule, getting back to a more third and manageable play. Leading active SBA, uh, FBS player in all-purpose yards per game, Will Shipley, the junior from the Charlotte area. Third down and seven. Club Nick has a man open. It's caught. Tyler Brown, the emerging force from right down the road in Greenville, South Carolina. 23 yards and a first down. 
And there's good pressure provided on the left-hand side by Verse, but how about Klubnik staying in there and delivering an accurate throw on a crossing route? Four receivers lined up in a bunch to the short side of the field, and another flag flies. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty. First down. Blake Miller, the right tackle. Ming is 18th career start. Just a sophomore started as a freshman last year out of Strongsville, Ohio. They are in field goal range, and Molly introduced you to Jonathan Whites. Might we see him on the field shortly? Will Shipley. You mentioned those all purpose yards. He had 238 of them last year in their win at Tallahassee. 121 rushing, 48 receiving, 59 in kickoff returns. He can do it all, 121 plus on the ground in each of the last two games against Florida State. Surprisingly, does not have a rushing touchdown this year. He goes out in the pass pattern and has it. And he's down near the 10 yard line. Cypress, another tackle. Three minutes to go in the quarter. Clemson on the move. You see this route all the time by Christian McCaffrey. Just a little halfback option route. You're working against outside leverage. You know that that tight end on the inside is going to clear it out. You have tons of space inside. A little more accurate throw, and that thing might have been out the gate. But just see the versatility by Shipley on display here in the first quarter. 14th play of the drive. They've marched 82 yards. Third down and three, design quarterback draw it seemed for Klubnik, and he's dropped for a loss. And here comes Jonathan Whites. Molly told you his story. The last four years was in this program as a backup behind B.T. Potter, the all-time kick-scoring leader in Clemson history. Never attempted a field goal, attempted three PATs, there's his family, his mom with her hands over her face. They've had kicking problems to start the year from a very highly recruited and talented Robert Gunn. So Dabo Sweeney called Whites in Charleston, South Carolina earlier this week to see if he would come back. He arrived on Monday. And his first career kick is good from 30 yards. And Dad, Jonathan, Mom, Lisa celebrate. He had a year of eligibility left, obviously. Elected not to use it because he thought he'd just sit for another year behind Gunn. So he was finishing grad school. He had a job lined up in New York. He was supposed to go up there later this coming week. Dabo Sweeney's sons, Will and Clay, told their dad on Sunday, you know, Jonathan Weitz is still in school. He's taking classes online, but he's enrolled. Dabo called him Sunday. He came up Monday, made seven out of eight in their facility. Said, Coach, I think I can do it. He practiced the rest of the week. But Dabo said yesterday, this is either going to be a great story or terrible. It's off to a great start. His boss is here. He was going to go work for Ally Financial in New York City. He already had an apartment. And he called his boss and said, I have a chance to go back and be the starting kicker for Clemson. And the boss said, I'll be mad if you don't do it, and I'm coming to the game. And Matt Brennan, we're told, is somewhere here today watching his now future employee. Gunn is still the kickoff man, and he bombs on out of the back of the end zone. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Good afternoon, Sean. Time now for our All State Good Hands Play of the Day. And John, or make that Jim Harbaugh's back in Michigan playbook. It's open book here. Yeah, nice little flea flicker there. Welcome back, Coach Harbaugh. That play does get called without Coach Harbaugh on the sideline. J.J. McCarthy to Colston Loveland, 35 yards. They would eventually score seven apiece inside the locker room. Give me my theme music. How we feel about the white helmet? I love it. Woo. Everything about it, it just... I mean, that is swag. We got Colorado coming up against Oregon on ABC after our game. Sean, back to you. All right. Glad Colorado finally gets some attention. On first down, Travis swings it out wide for Keon Coleman. 
And he gets three. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Jordan Travis suffered a left shoulder injury last week, but finished the game in a pregame warm-ups. He wore a brace on that left shoulder, and you could tell he was uncomfortable and not used to wearing it. He was constantly readjusting his brace, and he has since taken it off, so he's still figuring out how to handle this shoulder injury, Sean. We heard at the end of the first half last week at Boston College. Missed just the end of the second quarter. He turned and played the entire second half. He told us during the week he's good to go. Feels fine. Jaheim Bell stacked up by a fired up Clemson defense. Loss of three. R.J. Mickens up from his safety spot. Justin Maskell in on the play. And Jeremiah Trotter. State a two and a half point favorite on the road today, down three to nothing. And punting on fourth and 17. On the first play of the second quarter, Alex Mastromano, short, wobbly kick. And looked like it landed on the sideline at the 48. The Clemson coaches are all pointing to that spot, and that's where they're going to mark it, maybe at the 49. A moment ago, Molly with Mike Norvell. Coach, a lot of pressure on Jordan Travis there. What was your message to your quarterback after that drive? You know, we just uh, we had to continue to take what they give us. So, you know, obviously we got to we got to get a drive going uh, defensively. We got to get off the field on third down. Uh, they've had a couple of extensive drives, and then you know, obviously it's limited our possessions offensively. But we'll get out there, we'll get a rhythm going, and uh, just go keep playing. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you. I like Norvell in his fourth year, the win total has increased every year, and high expectations. Started the year ranked eighth, moved up to number three after the win against LSU. Dropped back one spot after the less than impressive win at Boston College last week, just a two-point victory. Phil Moff on first down, and he got four for Clemson. Like Norvell said, you know, they were hit 31 to 10 last week. He kind of lost their edge in intensity. Said they exhale, and you can never exhale. And I think that's part of the reason that they've kind of really honed in this week and focused on trying to finish, even if they get off to a great start, which has not been the case today. On second down, the catch made by Maffa. First down. Bernardo Green there for Florida State, a 12-yard pickup. A nice throw here from... Kate Klubnick trying to work Mop on the back shoulder. Gets a little bit of a rub route on the outside, and he throws his receiver open with a back shoulder. Given a lot of time. Deep down the middle. Diving catch. What a grab by Tyler Brown. And now he's not getting up. Great eyes there by Klubnik. As you see, he starts his eyes to the left, looks the defender off, and allows Brown to work the middle of the field after he manipulates that deep at the back. Brown with an incredible catch, but grabbing that right arm. Hopefully he's okay. 28-yard play. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm Andrea. Phil Maffa powered down inside the three. It looked like some sort of shoulder injury for Tyler Brown who's gone to the tent already without Antonio Williams and Cole Turner and Greg with a wide receiver group that isn't really considered to be a strength of this Clemson team as it has been many years gone by. Yeah, definitely a little more thin this year. And of course, this part of the field gave them a lot of fits against Duke trying to clean things up here in the low red zone. Well, they'll try to run it in with Shipley who got belted back. Gain of two, D.J. Lundy, Shaheem Brown in on the stop for Florida State. Third and goal from the one. 
Shipley at 15 rushing touchdowns last year, second in the ACC behind Pitts, Israel, Abana, Kanda. 26 the last two, still hasn't had one this year. You got to think just a downhill run. The left side of that offensive line has had a lot of success moving the defensive tackles for the Knolls. The fake to Shipley, and it's over the head of the tight end, Jake Brenningstool. And a flag comes out. The officials conferring in the back of the end zone. Holding defense number 15. Holding the top closest to the goal line. Automatic first down. Tatum Bethune, the fifth year senior out of Miami, a transfer from UCF. As you can see, working against Burning Stool, difficult spot to be in. Burning Stool gives the impression that he's blocking for a minute, then tries to release upfield, and you see the left hand of Bethune grabbing the jersey. That's a good call there by the official to give Clemson a fresh set of downs. Mafa. And he's driven back. The crowd saw Shipley, who was trying to block, go into the end zone. I think some of them thought he had the ball. Many of them cheered. No gain on the play. The Florida State defense standing up at the goal line. And you have to wonder, why is Clemson trying to kind of stretch the defense horizontally in the run game? They've had success going straight downhill. Behind their left guard, Marcus Tate, number 74. He's 6'5", 330, and Will Putnam, the center. Those are their two best offensive linemen. you got to think they're going to run right at those two to see if they can't move that defender off the ball. Shipley the lone back now. Klubnik went under center. They try the quarterback sneak with Klubnik. Touchdown! Taking a look at the progressive pylon cam. Difficult to see exactly where Klubnik is there. You see him emerge and that ball crossing the plane. Good call. Clearly a touchdown. St. Janice, uh, an extra tight end in there, helping the lead block. So Klubnik has his second rushing touchdown of the season. Both of these quarterbacks our dual threats. Here's Jonathan White. Off the beach in Charleston and off the golf course. And the extra point is good. He told Molly McGrath, if I wasn't kicking in the game today, I would have been up in that suite with my parents watching the game. And really total domination in terms of time of possession and ball control by Clemson. Florida State averaging under two yards per play so far. It's been very impressive from Clemson and their offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley, mixing run pass. The offensive line has clearly answered the challenge. Got to try to commit to the run against this Florida State front seven. They've done so nicely, even though the numbers wouldn't necessarily reflect great productivity in the run game. They've at least tried it, and it softened them up on the back end to allow for some nice completions. Robert Gunn is still the kickoff man. Dabo Sweeney said he just needs to catch his breath. He's going to have a great career here. And they needed a long field goal, end of the game, end of the half. They would probably go to gun. You just saw the big leg he has with another ball out of the back of the end zone. Here's Kevin. Sean, AT&T 5G, keeping fans connected as we take a look at our multi-view, which is showcasing a bunch of great games across all our networks over on ESPN. Auburn's first quarter struggles continue down 6-0 to Texas A&M. Virginia Tech with a 10-7 lead over on ESPN2. Western Kentucky up a touchdown on ESPNU. And SEC Network, keep an eye on Kentucky. Undefeated, they got Florida next week. They're up three touchdowns against Vandy early in the second. Back to you. The college football season really feels like it's beginning in earnest today. So many appealing matchups around the landscape. Travis dropped. A little screen for Marquiston Douglas. 
a tight end. And that play had potential if he held on to it. So far, Florida State just looks very out of sync offensively. They've had some issues along the front as far as protecting Jordan Travis. They didn't stay very engaged in some of their run fits so far. Clearly, this road environment kind of having an effect on what is a very veteran roster for the Knowles. Kyle Morlock, another one of the deep tight end group, went in motion. Travis under duress, back shoulder throw, and it is caught. Nice catch by Trey Benson, spinning around on the Clemson sideline for a 13 yard game. Man, this is big time right here. Great throw. Working against man coverage, you love your matchups with your running backs against linebackers, but to see a big back like that flip his hips and secure the catch is nothing short of remarkable. Did well to put it away right along the sideline. Travis over the middle and batted away. Broken up by Jalen Phillips, who's intended for Johnny Wilson. The big target at 6'7", 240, a transfer from Arizona State. And this Clemson secondary is going to have their hands full, a couple of really good weapons for Florida State. But their coverage so far has been excellent, forcing these Seminole wide receivers to make contested catches. That's now a drop for both Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman in the early going. Toa Feely, the running back now. So I feel he got the handoff, nothing doing, a loss of a yard. Xavier Thomas in his sixth year, as he has battled through a lot of injuries, made the stop. Just four out of eight passing for 32. Clemson brings some pressure. Travis caught. And we'll see where they spot it. It's going to be short of the first down. Kyle Morlock, a 10-yard gain. But he's about a yard and a fraction shy. And for the moment, the offense stays out for Coach Norvell. That left arm dangling by his side. He told us during the week he's all right. Clearly, he's not 100%. Fourth and one, they're going for it. At least lined up to do so. Jaheim Bell went in motion. They do snap it. It's Travis on a design run. It looks like he just got it with that last lunge. First down on a two-yard gain. And if that left shoulder wasn't hurting a moment ago, it's certainly hurting after this hit. As he's going down to the ground, you see him surge forward, but the contact is initiated by the defender. It looks like it's Sheridan Jones, the corner right into that left shoulder of Jordan Travis, but right here on this part of the field, this condensed formation, this is the spot where Florida State likes to throw the ball down the field. I think replay stopped it to look at the spot. Previous play is under further review. Whether or not he made the line of game. Yeah, I think the question is, did he kind of bounce into his final landing spot? We'll find out when we come back. Some people just know that's not going to fit. Those are the people who know to choose all. Are leading 10 to nothing. As we were away in commercial, referee Jeff Heaser announced after the replay review, the last play stands. It is a first down for Jordan Travis and Florida State at their own 49. Be alert here if you're Clemson in the secondary. This is part of the field where Mike Norvell likes to get aggressive and throw it downfield. Travis throws down the field, caught first down. Keon Coleman. And another hit taken by Jordan Travis on pressure by Jeremiah Trotter. And a good job moving the pocket here. You know that the offensive line has struggled at this point, but you see how quickly Trotter triggers, comes up and delivers the hit and forces the ball out of Jordan Travis's hands a little quicker than he'd like. 
still a nice catch and a nice throw by the quarterback. 14 yard gain. Florida State on the move. For the first time, down 10 to nothing. Plenty of time for Travis. Over the middle and caught in a crowd by Johnny Wilson. Very close to another first down. Looks like they're going to mark it just short. A gain of nine. This throw right here kind of just shows you the confidence that Jordan Travis has. Has a defender kind of right in his face, and that's a tight window. I know you have a big body wide receiver, but you had to throw that one with great precision, and he did so beautifully. Pressured by Tyler Davis, the outstanding defensive tackle. Midway through the second quarter. Travis again given time on target. Jaheim Bell nearly broke the tackle of Andrew Makuba. Last time Bell was here, he was on the South Carolina team that beat Clemson in the regular season finale. The end of last season, he was a big part of that win. It ended Clemson's 40-game home winning streak, the eighth longest of all time. He was a massive addition for Mike Norvell and his, their staff. Just extremely versatile, can play running back, can play tight end, and can, of course, split out as a wide receiver. Back to the ground in a quality game by Benson. Still on his feet with another first down to the nine-yard line. Trey Benson is just so strong. It's nicely done up front. You see him run through a couple arm tackles and how he finishes, man. It's a young man that gets better as the game goes on. He's so powerful. A few years ago, knee injury. Man, he is getting stronger and stronger almost every single season to the point where he's really a workhorse back for the Seminole offense. He's put points up on all 15 trips to the red zone so far this year. The 11th play of the drive with Rodney Hill now the running back. Travis looking for Hill on a wheel. And he's out of bounds. Barrett Carter, a terrific linebacker, had the coverage. He's one of those guys Dabble Sweeney says could play anywhere. Corner, safety, but he's an outstanding linebacker. Coach Sweeney says one of the best players he's had in his 20 years on the staff here at Clemson. And it's just been a great job defensively by Wes Goodwin. This is a route, it's the wheel route by the back out of the backfield that has killed them in the first three weeks. They've covered it really nicely on multiple occasions today and hasn't resulted in a lot for the Jordan Travis and the Seminoles. Second and goal, 12th play of the drive. They started on their own 25. Design run for Travis. And not a lot of running room. Wes Goodwin believes in his second year as a quarter, they are much improved. They were a disaster in the back end last year, but much more experienced. Second year in the system. Last year, Greg, they gave up 232 passing yards per game. That's 76th in the country. That number's under 150 yards a game, and they've played good pass defense today. Now the coverage is much tighter. Guys are playing more free, and you can tell they're very comfortable putting their guys on islands and forcing them to play man coverage. Third and goal from the seven. Play clock at two. Travis ends on wide open touchdown. Keon Coleman has Florida State on the board. Man, what an amazing design right here. You see Keon Coleman, look at him hesitate. Whoop, right around the defender that's coming out to take care of him on the underneath. He slips right in behind, and he finds himself an easy touchdown. That's just terrific design by Mike Norvell, acknowledging what Clemson's going to do in that situation and finding a perfect matchup to take advantage of. It's R.J. Mickens who lost the coverage. Does that go into the announcer jinx category as soon as we talk about the improved pass defense, the guys <laughs> wide open in the end zone? <laughs> it could have gone both ways, though, because Florida State, you said they had scored every time into the red zone. You so got jinx now. It's a jinx either way. Brian Fitzgerald, the extra point. Florida State had 21 yards on the previous two drives combined. They went 75 for a score.
NBC and ESPN Plus. Philadelphia, Tampa Bay, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN2. The point is the Rams and the Bengals. Bengals need to get it going. Here's Will Shipley. Almost got it going. Tripped up just shy of the 30. And limps off after a 27-yard return. Time now for the Affleck right. trivia question. Florida State and Clemson have combined to win 11 of the last 12 ACC championships. We want to know who won the other one. I know this one. I think this is the first Affleck trivia question I actually know. And I'm surprised because you cheated the last couple weeks well, and still whiffed when it was crunch time to answer the question. Well, you can, if you, even if you know the answers to the test, you can't get them all right. That'll cause suspicion. But I believe this answer involves a fake slide of some sort. Oh, there you go. You might have helped jog the memory. Florida State, a sideline warning. Well, these two teams won 11 of the last 12, eight by Clemson, including seven of the last eight. FSU won three in a row, 2012, 13, and 14. Hasn't won one since. Of course, Bobby Bowden won 12. That is the all-time record for coaches with Dabo Sweeney's eight second. The answer is... Affleck. They want me to say Affleck again. Does anybody not know that the trivia question is Affleck? I mean, it's a, it's a staple of college football. <laughs> Affleck, 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 in case I miss one next week. I want you to say it like the duck. Pittsburgh. Affleck. Beat Wake Forest two years ago. For Pat Narduzzi, Kenny Pickett. Fake that slide. fake slide <laughs> kept running, and they actually uh, changed the rules as a result. Quick slant, caught, first down. Troy Stolano, as they go deep into the wide receiver core due to injury, though he's somebody they think can be a weapon, just his second catch of the year. And they feel good about their young talent. They just haven't had a lot of opportunities to showcase themselves. Tyler Brown's really come on, but he's banged up right now, so it's going to be up to Stolano and Adam Randall, Brandon Spector to really step up. Gain of 14, Klubnik pressured. Klubnik takes off running and scampers out of bounds with the game. Chased out by Kalen Deloach, the fifth year senior linebacker, then a stalwart 26 consecutive start. Looked like it might be a loss, instead, it's a gain of four. We're down to 340 to go in the half. Tyler Brown is back on the field for Clemson. Lined up in that bunch to the right. That ball goes to Stilato again. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, out of Cardinal Gibbons with a gain of nine. He had one catch all year. He has two on this drive. Caught one for 12 yards last week against FAU. Knowing that Florida State just had a really nice drive, this would be a situation where Clemson would likely take a shot downfield, but maybe think it a little bit more ball control. Don't want to give the ball back too quickly to that Florida State offense that's found themselves. They have not been a big play offense this year, Clemson. They've scored a lot of points. Here's a big play. Brenning stole. Down to the 12 and very nearly guilty of taunting Kevin Knowles, it seemed. That is a 33-yard play, just their fifth of 30 or more this season. They started the day 103rd in the country in fewest 30-plus plays. Will Shipley for a short gain. And to your point, if the Florida State, you might start calling timeouts, and they do. They want to get the ball back. There's the long play to Brinningstool. And just a great job there by Kate Klubnik identifying a matchup. You get a tight end working downfield on a vertical route against a defensive end. Byron Turner has no chance in a situation like that. Easy pitch and catch with tons of separation that sets things up nicely for Clemson inside the red zone. We talked in the setup to this game, Clemson, the perennial power for the last several years, Florida State trying to get back to the top of the heap in the ACC and reemerge as a national title contender. And in Tallahassee this week, around their program, you know, the old 
Ric Flair quote, be the man, you got to beat the man. And that's the opportunity for Florida State today. You know, they've lost to Clemson seven times in a row. You want to say you're the premier program, you got to go out and earn it. Yeah, you do. And I think in an unusual circumstance, a team like Clemson that's won so many ACC championships, they actually come into this game as an underdog. That's been well documented. But I feel like more of the pressure is on Florida State. They've kind of played that way so far, whereas Clemson, it looks under control, very free, and have been very efficient both offensively and defensively. Club negate for his last eight passing. Feeling it. They give him another short throw and a touchdown. Will Shipley. A very similar route that they ran earlier, similar part of the field. This time, Clemson anticipates it just a little bit better, gives him a little bit more accurate throw, and there's nobody inside for Florida State. As Will Shipley falls forward into the end zone, what a great drive for the Clemson Tigers. Jonathan Whites from the beach in Charleston and the golf courses into the Lou Groza Award conversation as he keeps going as he has today. Made a 30-yard field goal in his only extra point attempt. <laughs> he didn't kick the football since April until Monday when he got the call from Coach Sweeney. Shipley the touchdown. They went 71 yards in seven plays, but time left for Florida State. But we come back 2-12 to go in the half. Kickoff is a touchback. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, after that last drive, quarterback Jordan Travis came off the field with a right hand injury. He was bleeding from that hand and was in visible pain. He keeps shaking it out before going out, and that plus his left shoulder injury, you can tell Travis is frustrated with the pressure he's facing. Sean. Such a great competitor. You see it. I mean, when you follow through and hit your hand on a helmet, I mean, it's just a prayer to make sure that nothing is too messed up on that throwing hand because just the littlest bit of pain can really affect your accuracy. They scored on a nifty drive in their last possession. They have two 12 and two timeouts. Down by 10. Wide open on target. Jaheim Bell belted out of bounds by Andrew Makuba. But a first down with an 11-yard pickup. That touchdown pass for Jordan Travis is 80th total touchdown. He has 25 rushing, number one in school history among quarterbacks. And he's now one touchdown responsible for, which also strikes me as dramatically incorrect behind Chris Winkie. Good pocket. And now on the run, it's caught by Keon Coleman. And still going down the sideline. That's what Travis can do. Injured left shoulder. Damaged right hand on the money after the rollout. And a great job by Travis locating it. Keon Coleman's wide open. There's no defender within 20 yards of him. Takes Travis a little while to identify him, but he throws a strike and makes a big play. 38 yards, the crowd thought Xavier Thomas was being held by Jeremiah Byers as they looked at a replay on the scoreboard. That was the reason for the boos. First and 10 under a minute and a half to go. Travis down the sideline trying to throw it up for the angular Johnny Wilson. There is a flag down. It was Sheridan Jones who had coverage. Sheridan Jones, who got flagged for pass interference. And that's so difficult on Sheridan Jones. As you take a look at the progressive pylon cam, kind of walling Johnny Wilson out of bounds. A lot of contact there, but my goodness, he had to be in coverage forever. So tough. But a good job of recognizing the one-on-one -on -one with your big-bodied wide receiver by Jordan Travis and drawing the foul. Clearly a good call. Shoved him out of bounds. Toa Feely, the running back. 
All kinds of time now for the Knowles. Travis using that freedom given to him by the coaches to perhaps change the play. Toa Feely ran into a wall, no game. Here in the second half, Mike Norvell and his offensive coordinator, Alex Atkins, they're going to have to find a way to create a little bit of balance running the football. Now, Clemson's excellent along the defensive front, especially a defensive tackle, as you see Alex Atkins definitely going to be a head coach here very soon. But they have to find some balance because they're putting so much on Jordan Travis's shoulders right now. Only 18 yards rushing. Second and nine, quick pop. Bell lunging for the end zone didn't get there. Got to the one. R.J. Mickens prevented the touchdown. Stadium scoreboard says third and goal. Florida State thought it had a first down. It doesn't matter. They have a touchdown. Jordan Travis is 26 career rushing touchdown adding to his Florida State quarterback record. And you see that void right there along the defensive front. Travis recognizes it, tries to find it, somehow finds a lot of room on the right-hand side and slips his way into the end zone. What a response from the Seminoles. Going 75 yards for the second possession in a row. Needed just a minute 50 that time. Ryan Fitzgerald the extra point. We'll be back in eight seconds after a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. So that is now. 81 touchdowns for which he is responsible. Tying Chris Wenke for most in school history. What a player. And we mentioned the career history at the top of the telecast. Disappointing year at Louisville. Came to Florida State. It did not start well. He thought about giving up football. He thought maybe he should be a wide receiver. Mike Norvell believed in him. And this young man is now a Heisman Trophy candidate in his final year of college football. And deservingly so. I mean, he has been terrific in response after a slow start. And, man, he's showing his toughness as well. Fitzgerald kicks off. It's been a touchback fest here today. I would think Dabo Sweeney would just be content to take it into the half with a three-point lead. Here's a look at the college football rankings brought to you by Prudential. All kinds of marquee matchups. Who do you like in Ohio State and Notre Dame? It's going to be a heck of a matchup. And I think clearly the last couple of years, Michigan has provided the blueprint to beat Ohio State. And I really believe with the steady play, of what Sam Hartman's provided the quarterback spot. They still have enough along the offensive line to create some issues in the run game. I think Ohio State's defense is excellent. I think Notre Dame pulls off the stunner tonight. What might be their biggest win in 30 years? Straight ahead with Maffa. Will be the last play of the half unless either team decides to call the time up. Clemson's going to try it. 30 seconds. I mean, after all, they have a, they have a, kicker that albeit has been a little shaky to say the least here to start the season but he is kicked field goals from 70 yards so maybe that's what they're thinking here yeah that's whites who's the new kicker as we mentioned who just brought onto the team at the beginning of the week one of the great stories in college football this season but robert gunn who was the kicker in the first three games has a huge leg Dabo said he thinks he might be able to make one from about 70 yards if it came down to that so he might get a chance would really be a great story somewhere down the line if they both participated uh, in a clemson victory 
But I think in terms of the overall game here, Greg, kind of what we expected. You know, these are two evenly matched teams, and Clemson is still a very good football team, despite people want to kind of push the narrative that they're dropping like a rock. They are not. I can assure you of that. And what I've been very impressed with is the steady play of Kate Klufnick. So far, 13 of 18, averaging more than 10 yards in attempt up to this point, has been smart, has been accurate, has gotten hit a couple times, but hasn't allowed the pass rush for Florida State to affect his play whatsoever. He's been excellent today. He's nine for his last nine. Flush from the pocket and sacked by Patrick Payton. And now neither team will use the timeout. Lost the seven on the sack by the Redshirt sophomore from Miami, the ACC. So the Seminoles are going to get the ball first to begin the second half with a chance to take their first lead of the day. Robert Gunn with another touchback. Only two of his kickoffs have been returned all year. Sean McDonough and Greg McElroy. Very entertaining first half. Greg, you previewed the quarterbacks at the top of the telecast. That's what quarterbacks like to do, but <laughs> they both really seem to catch a rhythm there uh, late in the half. Shockingly, that's where my eyes were for the first 30 minutes, but understandably so. A little bit of a slow start early for both Jordan Travis and Cade Klubnick, but really settled in. I thought their offensive coordinators, really on both sides, did a great job of making them comfortable and creating favorable matchups. The two combining to go 18 of 20 to close out that first 30 minutes and Jordan Travis gets the first crack in the second half to try to stay hot. With Lawrence Toafili, the running back, a play fake, a deep shot. Wilson behind the defense has the catch. And if that throw had been just a little longer, he might have gone even further. A 40-yard completion on the first play of the half. Ball just the tiniest bit underthrown, but look at the separation by six foot seven, 240-pound Johnny Wilson, number nine, RJ Mickens. It's kind of baited up with the play action fake, tries to recover, but it's a great throw there by Travis, bodying up his big receiver and creating a big play. Travis battling through. A left shoulder injury suffered last week. And a cut on his hand in the first half here today. Out wide. And nothing doing. Toa Feely stopped by Sheridan Jones. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, you mentioned Jordan Travis's injuries. They don't seem to be bothering him. And head coach Mike Norvell said he likes the adjustments his offensive line made in that second quarter. And he's confident they can keep him upright in this second half. But he stressed they need to get the run game going. And his message to Travis was, calm down. Go be you. You have trained for this moment your entire career. He said it is not too big for Jordan Travis. And rush for only 20 yards as a team. Trying to get it going with Benson, who got spun around they are in field goal range at the very least Jeremiah Trotter and Barrett Carter the two fine linebackers stop that play for a two yard gain they had run the ball pretty well matter of fact the trio the running backs Benson Toa Feely and Hill combined to average 117 yards per game coming in on five and a half a carry Three out of six on third down. Travis dumps it off. Toa Feely does not get the first down. Good tackle by the senior safety, R.J. Mickens. And a decision for Mike Norvell. Looks like the decision is to go for it. In this day and age, Greg, of coaches leaning on analytics, that's usually what it says in a situation like this. Yes, plus territory, fringe field goal, probably feel pretty good about making it at this point, but it feels like given the way Clemson's offense is operated, touchdowns are going to win this game, not field goals. So get their big body back inside. That's Trey Benson and see if he can't pound it up for a gain of one. Benson in the pistol. Travis keeps it flagged down. First down if the play stands. Keon Coleman chopped down at the 15-yard line by Nate Wiggins. For 10 yards, there is a flag. Far sideline. Illegal formation. Offense. Four players in the backfield. that penalty. Third down. Wow, that's a killer. Now you think he kicked the field goal on fourth and six. 
And Fitzgerald comes on. And you can see one, two, three, four, five. Needs to get this tight end up on the ball for that to be a legal formation. And unfortunately, he didn't do it. Well, it's going to be a 48-yard try from the right hash mark. There's really no breeze at the moment. Ryan Fitzgerald just three out of three. Haven't kicked a lot of field goals so far. Low, but with plenty of distance. And good. Like Norvell said, he's proud of Ryan Fitzgerald. He's had some tough moments in the past, but he's perfect this season now. Has made all 25 of his kicks, PATs, and field goals. Once down 10 to nothing, Florida State now even with Clemson, 17 all. Wow, you guys did great with this place. Yeah. And it was clean. Here it is, just around two seconds on a quick slant. But how about feeling the rush? You know this is one of the best tandems of defensive ends in the country. K Club knows he's gonna have to anticipate some throws. He's gonna get hit when he throws, does so there, does so beautifully. And then finding your weapons when you identify an issue with Florida State's coverage unit. He does so right there. You get outside leverage with Will Shipley, knowing he's on an option route, breaking to the inside. And Kate Klubnik, after a little bit of a shaky start, has really settled in and has been really decisive and accurate down the stretch of that first half. He got hit as he throws single coverage, and the battle won by Adam Randall for a 13-yard gain and a first down. Man, how about this catch right here by Randall? I mean, just completely draped. Somehow finds a way to reel it in, pin it against his thigh, and he drags it in. How about the concentration there? The eyes going down alongside it in the battle of the two number eights, Bernardo Green and Adam Randall. 10 for 10 now for Klubnik. With some help from Randall, had to pull that one down. He gets dropped for a two-yard loss. Joshua Farmer for Florida State. It's an FSU defense that had a season-high 10 tackles for loss last week at Boston College. In the first half, they used a lot of man coverage, really challenging this wide receiver core. Felt like they could clearly match up on the perimeter. Let's see if they stick with that plan because these receivers have done a pretty good job creating some separation against the secondary. Bill Maffa stacked up for no game, maybe a half yard. Jared Verse at the bottom of the pile, the transfer from Albany. Not highly recruited out of Dayton, Ohio. But everybody knows about him now. First team all ACC a year ago. And a number one defensive end on Mel Kuyper's draft board. A top ten pick. Looks off the corner. Klubnik almost had it intercepted. Diving attempt by Jari and Jones. It was Zarie Thomas who came on the corner blitz. Man, all-out pressure, but a good job by Klubnik initially avoiding the unblocked defender. But as you see, as he kind of recoiled, he saw Jerry and Jones undercut, and that was one heck of a play by Jones, creating that breakup on the edge. Well, Klubnik had completed 10 straight before that incompletion. Here's Aiden Swanson, the putter. He probably would have been the place kicker this week, too, if... Donovan White did not join the program. Booming putt, Keon Coleman, dangerous return man, brought it back nine yards. It was a 52-yard putt. For 10 years, ESPN has supported the College Football Playoff Foundation, bringing the college football community together during Extra Yard for Teachers Week, celebrate and honor great teachers. Since its inception, the CFP Foundation has recognized more than half a million educators. For more, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Dabo Sweeney recognized all of his educators. <laughs> when we talked with him yesterday, Phil Dean, our producer, asked him about teachers who influenced him. He said, they all did. And then he listed them all. And had to 
some scouting reports about some of them in fact. <laughs> Five minutes gone by. Third quarter and dropped for a loss. Rodney Hill by T.J. Parker. A freshman who they think is going to be one of the next great ones up front on defense for Clemson. I think T.J. Parker's got a ridiculously high ceiling. It's not often when you see a freshman just step in a defensive end and be a difference maker. But already through three, three and a half games, you could tell the number 12 for the Tigers is going to be a problem. Phoenix City, Alabama. Momentum has shifted to Florida State once down 10 to nothing now tied at 17 and trying to take the lead for the first time Hill again with nowhere to go just two yards Barrett Carter with help from Justin Maskell just amazing how good both defenses up to this point have played against quality rushing attacks I mean both these offenses really pride themselves on creating balance and so far, it's been nothing doing on the ground for either team. The play clock is not moving. And it's because there was an injured player. It's Mo Smith, the setter, just returned action today after missing the last couple. A truck is it? His dad, the head coach at Florida State, 2003, plants him upset. Third-ranked Florida State. Tommy Bowden's first win in the Bowden Bowl. Darius Washington. Talking to Maurice Smith, send him off. I think he was concerned that he needed to go off the field for medical attention. So that's the stoppage. He's out for at least a play. Washington, who has played a lot and started at center, is in on third down at 11. He started at center the last two weeks. Movement and flags down might be a free play. Up for grabs for Wilson. And he couldn't corral it with Nate Wiggins in coverage. It looked like Clemson was offside. Why not throw a jump ball to Johnny Wilson at 6-7? Defense, number three, five-yard penalty, third down. And that's pretty bold to have a backup center in the game and to alter your snap count just a little bit to see if you could draw the defensive ends off sides, but a good job of utilizing a little bit different rhythm there and getting a free play as Mo Smith returns to the game. Third down and six. They're three out of seven on third down with an average to go of 6.4. It's just been upgraded to 7.3. Might be the exchange rate. Pressure. Travis off his back foot. Incomplete. Intended for Jaheim Bell. Some coverage. It was Xavier Thomas who pressured the quarterback. Barrett Carter running in coverage. Just a great job by Xavier Thomas coming around the edge, working against Jeremiah Byers, trying to get a piece of him, but just too much speed for the redshirt senior edge rusher as he delivers a big hit and forces the ball out of Travis's hands quickly. Alex Mastromano is the punter. Florida State's had the best punt coverage team in America through the first three games. Their opponents averaging minus three yards per punt return. A fair catch made by Camp Green. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, as we honor those who serve, brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union, we take a look at Clemson Center Will Putnam, the son of Colonel Neil Putnam, who served 30 years in the U.S. Army, including 24 with the Green Berets, and the Putnam family sacrificed a lot. They moved frequently, but their one constant was each other and the garage gyms that Colonel Putnam built for his kids in every one of their new homes. He filled duffel bags and basketballs with sand, water jugs and buckets with concrete, and backpacks with bricks. And to this day, Will Putnam keeps a 150-pound duffel bag filled with sand and a 40-pound backpack in the back of his truck so he can always get a quick workout in. Greg, I'm wondering what's in the back of your truck. <laughs> Golf clubs. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he's a lot tougher than I am, that's for sure. On first down, swing pass. 
And a broken tackle. Tyler Brown gets close to a first down. Well, Putnam's dad, Colonel Neil Putnam, a Green Beret. Will's granddad, Neil Putnam, was the head coach at Lafayette back in the 1970s. Will's the heart and soul of this offensive line. Tough as nails, extremely strong, and says that he's the tone setter there in the middle of this offense. It really makes this go, makes it comfortable for his young quarterback. Gain of nine, and now Shipley ahead for the first down. Gilbert Edmond in on the tackle, another transfer. He's out of South Carolina. Great job there at the point of attack. They really have not had a ton of success up the middle on the right side, but that time Will Shipley surges forward for the conversion. Play action pass. Klubnik gets away from a jersey grab by Byron Turner. Now has the first down and much more in the Florida State territory. They'll spot him out at the 47-yard line. And a good decisive decision here from Kate Klubnik. Of course, feels the presence on the backside, steps up, evades, somehow finds a way to stay out of it, and doesn't waste any time looking downfield, tucks it up inside and takes off, and the scrambles continue to hurt this Florida State football team like they did a week ago. And they had to deal with Thomas Castellanos, an excellent runner at quarterback for Boston College. The club mid game was 17. He got hit as he threw it. Still almost completed it to Jake Brinningstool. Josh Farmer. Luckily, he had a part of the arm of Cade Klubnik. Ooh, boy. It's Florida State fortunate that they had the pressure up front on what was a bit of a slow-developing play. But if you look at number nine, burning stool over the middle of the field, I mean, there's nobody out there. If he can deliver an accurate pass, he's off to the races, and it's going to be a huge play. Klubnik. Short throw to Brinning Stool. And a short game. Good tackle by Tate Buffoon, a reliable tackler. Their leading tackler for the season. Held that to a one yard play. Right here, third and nine plus territory. Obviously, with the issues they've had with Gunn and the field goal unit, might be thinking four down territory here. Whites has hit from 51. But they're kind of in no man's land here. So if I'm Davos Swing, I'm telling Gary Riley, hey, you got two downs to get it here, so make it more manageable on fourth down. The strike caught. Looked like it was a little bit behind. Troy Stolano, but he still caught it. His third of the game. This one for 12 yards, and they continue the drive. More man coverage from Florida State. Excellent separation by Stilato and a great throw by Kate Klubnik. He takes off up the middle on a quarterback draw. Good for four. Malcolm Ray, a backup defensive tackle, made the play for Florida State. So Klubnik has thrown for 224 and a touchdown. And he has now been involved in the running game as well on this drive. Most importantly, he's not turned it over. That was a big problem for them in their opening loss at Duke. Abel Sweeney told us if we win this turnover margin, flag down on the run by Moffa. Tackled by Jared Verse. Said if we win the turnover margin, we'll win the game. Personal foul, face mask, defense double zero. Fifteen yard penalty, first down. Fabian Lovett. As you see Malfa getting up inside, there's Lovett, number zero, grabs that face mask quickly with his left arm as Verse cleans it up. Good call by the official. And I don't want to jinx that either. We mentioned this is the third time in four weeks we've had this crew led by Jeff Heezer. They are rock solid. And we haven't had much opportunity to question anything this group has done, the three games that we've done. Shipley, the running back. He goes out on the right flat, calling for the ball. They go to Brinning Stool instead, and he's down just shy of the goal line. Thirteen-yard play, and a 
Florida State player down. It's Jarian Jones who put pressure on Cade Klubnik on that throw. You're going to see pressure just right off the left side. Great disguise there by Florida State. Jerry and Jones is able to come free and delivers a huge hit to Cade Klubnik's backside. Klubnik feeling that presence gets it out just in time and makes a nice throw to the big target Brinning Stool to set up first and goal. Third catch for 47 for Brinning Stool. Jones got the worst of it. And is being escorted to 10. First and goal, Clemson. They were up 10 to nothing. Led 17 to 7. Before Florida State came back to tie it. Here's the 10th play of this drive. Watch for the QB sneak if they motion him behind Klubnik. Good call, Greg. And he's not in. Yeah, in this day and age where you can shove the quarterback, you know, why not try that? <laughs> I do it four straight plays. I mean, how many times did Jalen Hurts do it in the Super Bowl? I mean, it's very difficult to defend when you have that much of a surge. The Bush push, if you will, being used by everybody in college football and pro alike. Under four minutes to go, third quarter. Shipley to the goal line, touchdown! His second touchdown of the day, his first rushing touchdown of the season. Seventh career rushing touchdown. That is eighth among all active FBS players. Eleven play, 77 yard drive, just under five minutes to do it. And the view from the progressive pylon camera. Pretty well defended there by Florida State as Lovett almost had him in the backfield, but Shipley just would not be denied as he surged forward, extended that ball just enough. Replay confirms the touchdown. There's Jonathan Whites. Perfect. So far today. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, Molly McGrath. Our producer, Phil Dean, our director, Mike Roy. We send best wishes along to Scott Johnson, ordinarily the director on our crew, but Scotty J had a little knee surgery this week. And we're glad to hear he is recovering well, but he's Wally Pip, Mike Roy, fantastic today. Here's Kevin DeGandhi. Sean, number two, Michigan. Let's get an update with their defense. It's Mikey St. Restrill. Right place, right time, doing the right thing in that amazing blue crowd. And there he goes. Love the read. It was going to be a wide receiver screen. He sniffed it out. And then the amazing athleticism to keep his balance and take it to the house. 71 yards to the house. 24 7, Michigan. Dan Lanning in Oregon, 21 point favorites. Now their offense averaging 58 points per game. Getting ready for number 19, Colorado on ABC. 3 30 Eastern back to you be a big test for undefeated Colorado they're about a three touchdown underdog against coach Lanning's team Benson on the screen stayed on his feet spun away from Jeremiah Trotter great work by the officials not to blow that dead as well and it looked like he might be down it's an eight-yard gain yeah just clean it up on the back end if he is of course every play is reviewed but a great job by Benson Kind of lands, looks as though he's on top of Trotter and continues forward momentum. Incredible play. Jordan Travis with a flag down. Deep throw way too high for Keon Coleman. Jalen Phillips in coverage. Well, there's a flag at the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Offense. More than five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Take it down. The Dabo Sweeney electing to take it for second and seven instead of third down and two. 
Let's take a look at this hit by Jordan Travis. Kind of a slow developing play action. See number 54, Trotter sees a vacancy in the offensive line and delivers another big hit. Remember, Jordan Travis injured his left shoulder in the game against Boston College last week and has been grimacing multiple times today. Trey Benson, the running back. Trey Benson, the ball carrier, stacked up at the 29-yard line. Tyler Davis, T.J. Parker stopped it after a pickup of one for the transfer from Oregon. Florida State has 17 players who have started games who came in as transfers. Mike Norvell has really hit the jackpot several times in the transfer portal. Well, Clemson philosophically has stayed away from it. On third and six, up for grabs and incomplete in the direction of Darion Williamson. Interesting receiver to target in that instance, really not one of their top Receivers just three catches all year. Mike Norvell was pretty irritated on the sideline, wanting a hold. As you can see, that right arm of Makuba did look like he grabbed the jersey just a little bit as Williamson was trying to release vertical, but the throw was way off target. Clearly, just not on the same page with his wide receiver. Alex Mastromano from Australia is the putter. And a good one. Hamp Green. He brought it back to the 25-yard line. Well, while Dabo Sweeney's kind of like the tough guy bouncer denying entry to transfers. He said <laughs> they're all about evaluation and development and retention. Florida State taking advantage of the portal. That's definitely helped speed up the rebuilding job done very well by Mike Norvell. And they've really hit on the portal, too. I mean, you think about some of the additions. I mean, big-time impact players. Of course, Jordan Travis, Trey Benson, Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, Jared Verse, a handful of others. Their best players are all transfers, whereas Clemson leaves in a little bit more of a developmental approach and has not really utilized it to fortify their depth at many places. By the left side of this offensive line, you'll see both the left guard and the left tackle, Marcus Tate and Tristan Lee blocking. They get hat on the hat. There's a big void there for Moffa to exploit. They give it back to him, and he's yanked down by Jared Verse. Hasn't been much room today for this Clemson running game to really get going prior to that averaging less than two yards a carry but you see just one big play can really shake things up and help your average you throw in a 46 <laughs> that'll do it for sure it's a great job there by the left side of that offensive line pulling out and making some plays not the longest run of the year for Maffa he had a 49 yarder earlier this season which is the longest for their team this year here's a blitz and I mean, what a timely blitz here by defensive coordinator Adam Fuller. It looks like Moffa, maybe he's responsible because Kate Klubnick thinks he's protected. He's not looking at the pressure whatsoever. You saw Moffa kind of sneak out into his route. His eyes were looking around. Instead, they bring the pressure off the right-hand side, deliver a massive hit to Kate Klubnick. The ball 
falls out going to the left, and what a turn of events for the Seminoles. 56 yards by Deloach. The best thing that happened to him in the Florida State was the ball clanged off the hands of Braden Fisk. The defensive tackle got to the much speedier Deloach. And the extra point is up and good by Ryan Fitzgerald. And we're tied again at 24 in the final 31 seconds of the third quarter. Man, how about the hit? Perfectly executed there by Deloach. He attacks the quarterback's throwing hand. Kate Klubnick has absolutely no chance whatsoever to hold on to that football, especially as he's getting ready to release it. And Deloach finishes what he started as Mike Norvell has to love what he just saw from his defense who was on their heels just a moment ago. First turnover of the game for either team. I mentioned Dabo Sweeney said we have to win the turnover margin if we're going to win this game. They're minus one. That was their biggest problem their opening night loss at Duke. Turnovers. A couple of blocked field goals, and twice they were inside the 10 yard line on first and goal. It's James Rosenberry, the long snapper, who's injured and being helped off now. They had a first and goal to seven in the third quarter, first and goal to one in the second half at Duke. Fumbled both times, and you're not going to win when that happens especially against a very good team like Duke. And just a killer there, too, because Clemson was really starting to ramp it up. Finally get a big play in the run game. They're in a great rhythm offensively. Florida State, hands were on their hips a little bit, starting to feel the pressure and the walls closing in here in Death Valley. And they just make the biggest play of the game by a mile and the sudden change and totally flipping the momentum on its head. Mike Norvell brought Adam Fuller with him from Memphis where Fuller had been his defensive coordinator so Fuller's been with him in Tallahassee for all four seasons and he's a very good coach Adam Fuller well timed pressure and here's Fitzgerald to kick off again finally a returnable kickoff and it's Will Shipley First team all ACC as a return man last year. That one for 19 yards. Let's go back to the fumble. I really believe that Maffa is responsible here. You actually see him surveying, looking a little bit. It looked right there. I think he's supposed to track back to pick up that pressure. Mm. He kind of gets lost after the play action, doesn't see the guy blitzing, because the way Cade Klubnick's mannerisms there in the back end, a quarterback knows when a when a pressure is going to override and overload your protection. Klubnick had no idea whatsoever, so I really assume that was a bust there in the backfield with what Moffa was doing. Should have been in protection, instead released out on the route, and resulted in a huge hit. Shipley waving through traffic, bouncing off a hit, and has a first down out to the 43-yard line, 17 yards. Go right back, and uh, we've been moving the ball the whole game, so let's just respond. This is this is how you win games like this, they're, and they're not going to lay down, and neither are we. So we got it to the fourth quarter, got a heck of a matchup. We got to find a way to win it. All right, thanks, Coach. Well, confirming your suspicion, Greg, that it was Moffa who missed that block on the big turnover. On the first play of the fourth quarter, Klubnik threw toward Adam Randall. Crowd thought he was being held by Azaria Thomas. No flag. Tied at 24. Florida State has lost seven in a row to Clemson. With a dump Shipley, Renardo Green up from the corner for a two-yard loss. Mike Norvell's team overall has won nine straight back to last year. Man, how about Renardo Green right here coming up right on the outside? He has contained, but he recognized the opportunity to deliver a big hit, and he does so to set up third and long. Third and 12. And something has to give here today. Clemson's won 25 straight conference home games. That streak on the line today. 
Here's pressure. Klubnik got it off quickly. Diving catch made short of the first down. Troy Stolano has become a big factor today. In fact, he has an eight-yard gain on that catch, his fourth catch of the day. Back-to-back -back incredible plays by Renardo Green, the fifth-year senior. Makes the tackle behind the line of scrimmage on Shipley to allow his defensive coordinator to call an all-out pressure. Then he's on an island against a slant, moving away, and he makes the tackle short of the line to gain. Just a terrific sequence there from the corner. Aiden Swanson. End over end, fair catch signal, and made by Keon Coleman. Just a spectacular day of college football here on ABC. Right after we're finished, we send you to Eugene for the top 20 matchup. Number 19, Colorado at number 10, Oregon tonight. Saturday night football presented by Capital One, number three, Texas against Baylor. And still almost the entire fourth quarter to go here after a 39 yard punt. Jordan Travis and the Knowles on offense. They had one first down as a team in the third quarter where they scored 10 points with a defensive touchdown. From their own 13. The design rollout for Travis. Throwing it up for Wilson. And he can't play it. Well covered by Nate Wiggins. Continue to be impressed by this Clemson secondary. Wiggins there. This is a really tough draw against these Florida State wide receivers. They have great length. They can separate. They can make contested catches, but they have been draped on them most of the afternoon, making it very difficult for Jordan Travis and company. Those were the numbers starting today. A lob and a catch on the run by Benson. Up the sideline, Jeremiah Trotter didn't get him. And that led to much more run after the catch. Jaden Lucas finally the stop, 29 yards. This is a heck of a throw by Jordan Travis. He knows that he has an unblocked defender that's coming right at him. He has to loft it over the defender, and he does so beautifully right to the outstretched yards of Benson. That is such a difficult throw. It doesn't look like it, but my goodness, what a play. So 29 yards. Travis is now thrown for 221. Plenty of time throwing the wheel route and juggled and incomplete. Off the hands of Jaheim Bell. They had the linebacker Barrett Carter covering him again. And as Wes Goodwin, the defense coordinator, said yesterday, Jaheim Bell's a problem because he can hurt you in so many ways. Yeah, that's the matchup you want if you're Florida State. It goes to show you just how athletic these linebackers are for Clemson. To have a linebacker running in space against a speedy tight end, that's a difficult matchup for most, but not for Cock Carter. Florida State still has not led today. They were down 10 to nothing, 17 to 7. They are down by seven again before the defensive touchdown tied it up. Benson stopped for no gain. Here's third down and ten. Big play call for the 41-year-old head coach Mike Norvell. Might get a one-on-one -on -one situation at the top. With your big body wide receiver against Jaden Lucas. That's where I'd be looking if I'm Jordan Travis. Clemson acting as though they might bring pressure. They did. And it is caught by Wilson in the middle of the field, but way short of the first down. RJ Mickens came on a safety blitz. And I would think that they would punt with six yards to go in their own territory. That was a heck of a play there by Jordan Travis. Pretty fortunate, though, that big Johnny Wilson was on the receiving end. She kind of threw that one up for grabs. And another timely pressure from the defensive coordinator, Wes Goodwin, on third down. Wes Goodwin said he's much more comfortable and confident himself in his second year as the coordinator. Mass Romano. Good end over end kick. Oh boy. They let it bounce.
fouled. Yeah, that was a mistake. Greedy Vance down to down it. it was Hamp Green, who's not usually their punt returner, back there. 51 yard punt. You're watching ESPN Afternoon College Football on ABC, presented by Jill. Looking forward to that one right after we're finished here. And this is a dandy. A Klubnik throwing for Bo Collins incomplete. 1 and 11 a year ago, 3 and 0 this season. Just Only three teams have started 4 and 0 after losing 11 or more. It's truly remarkable what he's done. 86 new players, 50 plus new scholarship players. Just wild to turn around in Boulder. Here's Phil Maffa squirting through the middle. And a big third down coming up here. The punt has pinned Clemson in deep. And if Florida State forces a three and out, they should have excellent field position. Clemson would be punting into the breeze here. Not a heavy wind. Maffa remains the running back. Klubnik threw it to him. Lots of green grass. He tries to go up and over and gets shoved out of bounds with a first down as he tried to clear Kevin Knowles. It's a 12-yard game. It's a very aggressive defense. You can see the misdirection, though, immediately there called by Garrett Riley. little fake to the left. Moff is out in the flat to the right with some blockers out in front as he goes vertical to try to get up over that defender. What a great call there by Garrett Riley. Shipley stopped for no gain. Of course, Garrett Riley was the offensive coordinator last year at TCU, uh, the team that went to the national championship game. The two years prior to that, he was also under Sonny Dykes at SMU. Each of those three seasons, they were in the top 15 in the country in scoring offense and averaged at least 36 points per game at each of them. He won the Broyles Award last year with that resume as the top assistant in the country. And even though they only scored seven points at Duke, they had over 400 yards of offense in that loss. False start here against start. the Tigers. Offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, second down. It's the only game in the history of Clemson football in 128 years when they had 200 yards of rushing and passing offense and lost. And they found the rhythm the last couple of weeks against lesser competition, 66 points against... Charleston Southern and 48 against Florida Atlantic. He does a great job and has really done a nice job with Kate Klubnick these last couple weeks. Just 34 years old, Klubnick steps into the pocket and throws too far. The receiver had hooked it up, Bo Collins. Here's third down and 14. Garrett Riley had just finished coaching in the national championship game. He said, I got to bed about 3 o'clock in the morning after we lost, and he had a text message from Dabo Sweeney at 7 a.m. on that Tuesday morning. Would you be interested? By Thursday, his, he and his family were here at Clemson. Tough play call for him on third down and 14. Klubnik dumps it off. Bo Collins at the 20, well short of the first down. Got four, needed 14. Well played by Azaria Thomas. Braden Fisk put the heat on Klubnik. And another nice job by the Seminole secondary having to make a play on third and long in the open field. That time they drop out, try to keep everything in front of them. The last time Clemson was in third and long, they pressured. That time they drop out, a little change it up as far as the tendencies are concerned. And they drop him for a stop. What a great job there by the Seminoles. Keon Coleman back for the Aiden Swanson punt. It is a deke. Coleman went to the left when the ball was coming to the right sideline. Now it's a different Florida State player who picks it up. Lawrence Toafili. That's worked in the past for FSU, but not this time. 62-yard punt, 8.18 to go, still tied. Take home a souvenir. Is presented by Gillette Labs, the next generation of shaving. John McDonough 
Greg McElroy, Molly McGrath in Clemson, South Carolina. A dandy for supremacy in the ACC, although there are other teams in the conference who think this might be their year as well. A lot of football to be played this season, but this is a huge game, as it is every year. Jordan Travis, after a 62-yard punt by Aiden Swanson. Knowles thought they'd have better field position than this. Travis pulled it back and fired it over the head of Johnny Wilson. Hard to do. That's been a good battle out there on the edge with Nate Wiggins in coverage. Right there, a little run pass option. It looked like Travis there had plenty of room. If he wanted to run that, he would have gained seven or eight yards, no problem whatsoever. It felt like Johnny Wilson got behind the defender, decided to cut it loose, and unfortunately for him, missed the mark. 18 of 28 for 225. And he's rushed for a touchdown. Jordan Travis, another one launched deep. Too far in front of Keon Coleman. Jaden Lucas singled out by West Goodwin yesterday for fine play. Said he's playing with a lot of confidence as a sophomore. He had the coverage. There's three out of ten on third down. Mike Norvell's Knowles. with a spy now the spy comes after Travis on target to Wilson but short of the first down there is a flag in the offensive backfield looked like Xavier Thomas was held by Jeremiah Byers he was and this has been a difficult matchup all game for Jeremiah Byers Xavier Thomas trying to work around the edge. You see him just grab at the jersey and throw Thomas to the ground. Easy call by the official. Would have been fourth and short, but it yeah. looks like they're going to accept the penalty, which is a little surprising given where they're at on the field. Yeah, it would have been fourth and about two. And I don't think Florida State would have gone for that on their own 26 or 27-yard line. But Dabo hoping for another stop on third and 19, get even better field position after a punt. Eight minutes to go. And a timeout called by Clemson. First charge timeout. Clemson. 24-24 in Death Valley, 7.57 remaining. With a big defensive play for Dabo Sweeney, came flying down the sideline to call timeout. And then after he did, he wasn't happy with what they had going on there, obviously. After he came down and got the timeout, he went running back and got right in the face of Wes Goodwin again. Not happy with the defensive coordinator. Kind of threw Wes under the bus at the interview at the end of the first half as well. But can the defense make the play then yet? After the timeout, it's Xavier Thomas. Just relentless pursuit, a three-man rush. But Thomas coming off the right edge. They even have help with their tight ends, try to help the protection. It still doesn't matter. Can't take a sack against a three-man rush. That ball's got to come out a little sooner because this makes this punt very difficult. Second sack for Clemson. Well, after Swanson's big punt, flip the field position. Florida State needs one, and they get a good one from Mastromano. Sending Hamp Green back inside his 35. And he's to the 43, perhaps the 44. Here's Kevin Nagandi. So we got a great one in Death Valley right now. We hope to have a good one in Eugene. Bo Nix 
He's been fantastically offense both. Leading an offense that's averaging over 50 points a game. He's been outstanding, especially the intermediate to deep ball. Speaking of fantastic, Shador Sanders, even though he's been dealing with a ton of pressure and hit 55 times this season, he's been outstanding leading the FBS in passing yards and touchdowns when pressured. Oregon, Colorado, less than 40 minutes away on ABC. Back to you, Sean. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Last three Clemson drives. Three plays in that fumble returned by Florida State for a touchdown. Four plays and a punt. Six plays and a punt after they'd scored on four of the previous five possessions. Bo Collins, powerful run after the catch, an eight-yard completion from Cade Klubnik. I like the call there by Garrett Riley. Easy completion for your quarterback to kind of get the drive started, give him confidence back. And trouble. And Klubnik got back on it. That was reminiscent of the Duke game. A costly missed exchange down around the goal line. Well, this is a run play, but you have the option as a quarterback to throw it if you like the covers to the outside. Shipley goes to receive the ball, and he runs into Klubnik as he's trying to throw it. Just an unfortunate exchange right there that resulted in the lost yardage third down and six six ten to go the play clock has expired guess the conversation might be was it properly reset there is no file for delay a game the play clock was never reset accordingly it is third down Please reset the game clock to six minutes, 17 seconds. Thank you. The equalizing score. The fumble return by Kalen Deloach, 56 yards. Second defensive touchdown of the year for Florida State. They didn't have any last year. 5 or 11 on third down the Tigers. Klubnik against the blitz. Got rid of it. The crowd wants pass interference. And a late flag comes flying in. Mike Norvell can't believe it. It was Shaheen Brown who blitzed for Coach Norvell. Pass interference. Defense number eight. Wow, that is a huge call. Penalty at the spot foul. First down. Renardo Green had the coverage on Bo Collins. And let's look at the contact. Definitely is pass interference. As you see, Renardo Green, ton of contact as Bo Collins is trying to release and come back to his quarterback on a curl route. But a lot of contact. Obviously, the ball was forced out. I'm sure Mike Norvell saying is uncatchable, but well, either way, that's a good call. It looked like Bo Collins had his arm around the hip of Renardo Green. Here's Kay Klubnik. That was an enormous call. Let's go back to it and bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think you have to call this. The defender had his hand all over the, the, the shoulder pad. Now, the ball was thrown sooner than anybody thought, but if they'd have let go and the ball would have been thrown normally, I don't think you'd have had anything. Yeah, he had a pretty the good grab there, so of there. I think you're right. Yes, he did. So, Klubnik, the ball carrier. And is it possible that this game might come down to a kick by Jonathan Weitz? It's already an incredible story. The kicker, who was no longer in the program, got a call Sunday to come be their kicker. Showed up on Monday and has been flawless so far today. Three extra points Second and a made field goal. Clemson. Clemson down to one timeout. 5.20 to go. Florida State and Clemson tied at 24. I used to watch the Heisman House every year on TV. I'd always wonder. They first met in 1970. So many big games throughout the years. Florida State and Clemson and another one here today. Florida State has the nation's fourth longest active winning streak back to last year. They haven't defeated Clemson since 2014. Clemson has not trailed today. Twice had a 10-point lead, second and two, and a first down run by Will Shipley. 
with a pickup of four, Kalen Deloach. With the game tying defensive score, made the tackle. And when they snap it next, they'll be under five minutes to go. And Clemson now not in any hurry in scoring position with a chance to take the lead. Yeah, being very mindful of the clock. Kate Klubnick actually came all the way to the Clemson sideline to get that play call. So very cognizant of exactly how much time is left on the shot clock before they snap the ball. Snap it at six. Design run for Klubnick. Who got blasted by Tatum Bethune. My goodness. And they're helping Klubnick get his shoulder pads back inside his uniform. Man, Tatum Bethune is just a heat-seeking missile. He identifies the quarterback on the slow draw with pull action out in front. And he delivers a huge hit to Cade Klubnick and root to setting up second and long. Klubnick listed at 6'2", 205. Second down and seven. Pressure off the corner. They throw it to the other side, and it's a one-yard pickup on the pass play to Shipley. Deloach, another big play. Shipley with four catches now, tied for the team high. Similar circumstances backed up in their own end. They used a little misdirection where they faked the throw to the left, and they ran their running back out to the flat. With a right-handed quarterback getting him on the move to the right, if they reload Shipley into the backfield, that could be really effective. Here's the reload right now. Third down and six. On target. Klubnick to Tyler Brown for a first down to the 12-yard line. The play of 13. Clearly, Florida State very aware of where Shipley's at. They get him moving to the right, identifying man coverage, and they find a quality matchup there over the middle as the freshman Brown continues to deliver big moments for this offense. Grew up just down the road in Greenville. Wanted to play for Clemson. They weren't recruiting him, despite the fact his high school coaches kept after the Tigers staff. Thought he might be going to Minnesota. Then after Thanksgiving of last year, they made him an offer. And he's been a very important player. Shipley stopped. And is it time for Florida State to start thinking about timeouts? Clemson has plenty of time left. They're in field goal range. It's Florida State who might need the time. Letting the clock run. And the possibility of an unbelievable Hollywood ending. Gross as White's paced the sideline. They fake a trick play, and the ball's batted down by Patrick Payton. Third down and 11, and it also stops the clock. Yeah, more importantly, stops the clock here. Try to go with a little misdirection. Payton plays it perfectly, beats it around the right hand side, and at six foot five and change, it's going to be difficult to get that throw up and over the top. Don't love that play call there no. from Garrett Riley at all. And they had it covered everywhere. Even if it had been batted down, it looked like they had the receivers in coverage. 155 to go, third down and 11. Tenth play of the possession. They bring pressure. Klubnik and a big tackle, another big play by Patrick Payton. And now Norvell will use his first timeout. Charge timeout. Florida State with a minute 49 to go and here comes Jonathan Whites and if you joined us late Whites was in the football program the previous four seasons as a backup in four years here never attempted a field goal kicked three extra points three for three one each of the last three years most recently on senior day when they let him kick one at the end of a route against Miami he left the program knowing that Robert Gunn would be the kicker this year even though he had a year of eligibility left. Gunn has struggled. Dabble Sweeney's son said, Jonathan White still has eligibility. He's in school. He's in grad school, doing it online in Charleston. Dabble called him Sunday. White was here Monday. Kicked well during the week. 
And he made a 30-yard field goal to start the scoring today. He's made three extra points. Dabble Sweeney said it's either going to be great or terrible. This would be the ultimate greatness. Middle of the field. From the 20-yard line. A 30-yard kick. And it is no good! Mom, Lisa, the White's family, Jonathan, the dad, they can't believe it. Wow. Perfect snap, perfect hold, good contact. Unfortunately, though, that left foot angled just a little bit wide. And he pulls that ball just outside the left upright. What would have been a Hollywood ending. Well, the Raiders are on strike. Just agony as the field goal unit that continues to play this Clemson Tiger team. So now a chance for the dramatic ending for Florida State on the road. Jordan Travis up the sideline. What a catch. A hands catch by Johnny Wilson. And they're all the way out to their own 45. Wow, what a catch. Working against Jaden Lucas. The coverage is decent, but he gets behind him just enough as Jordan Travis drops it in the bucket. And the six foot seven Johnny Wilson reels it in. What an incredible way to start the drive. Travis, a good fake. Travis got away and then slid down after he escaped T.J. Parker. Neither team stopping the clock with 105 to go. Might have come down to the foot of Ryan Fitzgerald. Travis hooks it up for grabs, incomplete. Wilson again with Lucas in coverage, and he had help coming over the top from Shelton Lewis. Forty-nine seconds to go. Not in field goal range for Fitzgerald at the moment. FSU three for 11 on third down. Travis after the pump on target for a first down to Johnny Wilson to the Clemson 39. An excellent job in protection too by Florida State. They've struggled a little bit with the speed rush of Clemson and that time they give Travis plenty of time. 18-yard play, Travis, too high for Wilson. He was under duress from Ruka Rororo. As a quarterback here, you know you're kind of right there on the fringe of field goal. You got to be thinking pressure by the defense because Wes Goodman's thinking, hey, we got to knock him out of field goal range. So Mike Norvell and his quarterback, they have to understand that Clemson's likely going to be aggressive. How quickly can you get the ball out? How quickly can you find a receiver in space to see if they can create some yards after the catch? Fitzgerald's career long is 53. That was in 2021. Be longer than that from here. Travis up for Coleman, well covered at the 20 yard line. Broken up by Jalen Phillips. They have these big receivers. They're happy to put them in one on one situations and hope they win the jump balls. They didn't win that one. I'm Mike Norvell here. I might think about the possibility of a screen. Wes Goodwin has been very aggressive. They blitz. If they overload my protection, I might be able to hit my back out in the backfield or receiver in space to see if I can't make this field goal a little more manageable. Third down and 10, 23 seconds to go. Tied at 24. The Knolls have not led today. Pressure up the middle. Travis flushed. Fires and it's incomplete. Looked like Wilson had hands on it, but so did Nate Wiggins. 
And what will Coach Norvell do on fourth and ten at the 39? Too long for the field goal try. So they're going to go for it. Do you like this move, Greg? I do. I would take a timeout. This snap is too important to kind of rush out there and not get a good look of what the defense is going to do. And it's Clemson that uses the timeout. It's last. Third, final timeout. Clemson, 30 seconds. And to me, that's interesting too, because if you're Clemson and you get a stop here, you're, you're one play away from field goal range again, and you might want that timeout to get the field goal team out there, stop the clock. Now you're not going to have it. And you always have to keep one in your pocket for the kicker. But with 18 seconds left, this play likely to take at least five or six. You still have to go about 20 yards. And of course, with being under two minutes, the clock will stop after a first down. You would have enough time to potentially get up and spike the ball. But either way, keeping that timeout in your hip pocket would have been extremely valuable for Clemson there. The dominant force in the ACC is not over. Florida State wants to announce it is back in a big way. Fourth down and 10, 18 to go. They brought pressure. Travis deep down the middle and incomplete. Looking for Keon Coleman. Double coverage arrived. It was Wiggins who's down who had the primary coverage. And it was a good job buying a little time by Jordan Travis working one-on-one, -on -one, little contact at the top, but either way, and then you see how Wiggins lands, kind of lands awkwardly on that left leg. Hopefully he's okay, still down on the ground. It was well defended there by Clemson, and... Really kind of a Hail Mary situation there by Jordan Travis. Well, Travis saw that grab in the middle of the route, despite the fact that he was being pressured. Wiggins has had a good day. Junior from Atlanta who uh, had some rough moments earlier in his career, but has come on. Had a pick six in the ACC title win against North Carolina last year. He's on his feet but with his left foot off the ground. So now 12 seconds, Greg. They're on their own 39, and they don't have a timeout. I mean, it's good enough field position. You have to try to do something, don't you? Absolutely. I think you could try without question, but understand every single throw you make as a quarterback has to go in one of two places, either beyond the sticks, and then you're alerting your team right now in the huddle, hey, if we get a first down on a completion, receiver has to declare down immediately, and we got to hustle as a group up there so we can spike the ball and stop the clock. So you can do that, or you can work the perimeter. You can work the sideline and obviously stop the clock with any player that goes out of Bounce. They've used their last two timeouts on defense, two of their three in this half. Klubnik's had a nice day, 24th for 35, 283, and a touchdown. No interceptions. He did lose a fumble against a blitzer that he didn't see. Conservative play call, but Shipley gets to the... 48 of Florida State, and again, now you don't have that timeout. You can go and they wind it. the clock. They're not even lining up in Tallahassee, playing without suspended Jameis Winston. Here's Jaheim Bell on the first play of overtime. And he's stacked up after a one-yard gain. The primary defender, Tyler Davis.
In 2014, Florida State came back from a halftime deficit of 10 to 3 to win. Second and nine. Jordan Travis throwing in a single coverage and the catch made. They keep firing those jump balls and that time Keon Coleman brought it down for the touchdown. 24 yards and Florida State leads for the first time today. What an incredible catch by Keon Coleman and tremendous recognition by his quarterback, Jordan Travis. A moment ago, Nate Wiggins injured on that long fourth down play. So he's working against Jaden Lucas, the young sophomore, talented player, but a guy that's probably not going to be able to win that 50-50 ball against the incredible Coleman. Every point important in overtime. Fitzgerald's PAT is good. Keon Coleman, the transfer from Michigan State, is five for 86 and two touchdowns today. Using that six foot four, 215 pound frame. Started his career at Michigan State, but he had been recruited by Florida State. The staff had a relationship. The view from the progressive pylon camera. He thought Florida State had a chance to win big. And he's a big reason why they got off to that opening win against LSU when he had three touchdowns in his debut. And another good throw by Travis. Terrific throw. And every time that ball's in the air in a 50-50 situation and Coleman's on the receiving end, it's more like an 80-20. The guy does that almost every week. And now Cade Klubnick takes the field looking for an answer. Have to have the touchdown. And the extra point. That's why you go on defense first. You know what you have to do when you get the ball. Then an up and down day for this Clemson offense. Pressured. Clubnick got it off, and it's an incomplete pass for Shipley. The pressure in his face forced the Aaron throw. And a lot of the energy has gone out of the crowd here. In fact, the only noise we hear right now is the Florida State small section in the far left corner chanting defense. Palpable tension from the home crowd. Shipley, tough run. He was not going to be stopped. He is six inches from another first down. Third down, less than a yard. Shipley, the lone running back again. They faked it to him. They throw it out wide and lost yardage. Adam Randall stopped by Renardo Green. And the crowd boos the play call. Well, they got a little fancy late in regulation, and that one seems to me to be overthinking it, Greg. Yes, and they give Cade Klubnick the freedom. If he likes the look to the left, he can throw it. But that's really designed to be a handoff. As an older quarterback, you will understand the down and distance and what you need in order to get a fresh set of downs. Instead, he throws it out, set up fourth and two for the game. About a yard and a half that they have to have, or it's ball game over. Klubnik deflected and incomplete. Florida State wins at Clemson. They beat the Tigers for the first time since 2014.